Hey guys, welcome back to another video here in the Alpha Pack shop. Check it out, my dudes. So here we have a 2022 Can-Am Outlander 850XMR on 32 inch assassinators. Y'all may have seen this on YouTube. This is the FT Mike Mobile. So FT Mike's YouTube channel, y'all go check him out and uh, you'll see a bunch of vids with this bike. And so it's in today for some loving. So that's what it's about to get. We're about to tear into the clutching, do a couple things with the plastics, some fluids, bumper stuff. Here we have his new CV Tech clutch, Maverick belt. Uh, I believe this is like the EPI spring for the secondary. New clutch bolts. These are my pullers. Got some fluids over here. But yeah, guys, I got some work to get done on this bad boy. May go take it down the road, see what it does with the stock clutching, and then I can compare it down the road after the CV Tech clutches in and see how it does then, RPM wise and mile per hour wise. And uh, I'm gonna get busy on doing all the other things we discussed. So here we go. All right, guys. So FT Mike Mobile. This is the stock primary and secondary stock setup with the 32 inch assassinators we're going to check the rpm and mile per hour and stuff and then once we do the cv tech clutch we'll do it again and see what they the difference is so here we go this is in high from a stop the engagement on this clutch is right at about 17 1800 rpm so here we go like 6700 rpm is kind of where this clutch is set at for the stock clutch here's low engages around 17 1800 so here we go Got some data guys. Put it back in high. Now it's time to bring her into shot and start tearing it apart. got the bumpers removed yeah they were a little bit of a pain the front especially if you've ever had to take an xmr front bumper off i don't these bolts here are a pain in the ass they do not like to be loosened up you feel like you're about to break your ratchet or your wrench or whatever you're using your torques but got them loosened up enough in the rear and was able to get the fronts out to be able to get slide the uh, front bumper out the rear rack comes off first then the bumper can come off so that's also out there getting prepped. Now I get to move on to getting these floorboards removed and uh, get that clutch over on the other side started up. So we'll be removing the old one, putting in the CV Tech and the secondary spring. And uh, yeah, we'll move on from there. All right, guys, haven't gotten to the clutch yet. We got some things to go over. I've got it stripped down really good though. And as I was taking panels off, I started noticing little things here and there. So let's go over what I found. 
So it looks like this exhaust tube for the clutch has been kinked or something and formed like that, but it looks like it's cutting air off. So might have to see, yeah, might have to get that figured out. That's a little bit of a restriction there. Over here, he had mentioned the light bar wasn't working. So went through the switch and everything. We had a wire come loose off of one of the switches and a lot of the connectors where it's crimped, like it's not making great contact here. It's sliding inside of there. It's sliding in and out on that one. Uh, on a couple down here, this is the main issue. So the crimp that was here came off for the power that he has ran. Yeah, it's kind of some shoddy wire in there, Mike. Come on, my man. But uh, I'm going to get you fixed up, my dude. So I'm going to redo these connectors. And what else have I found? I know there was something. Oh, big deal. So check this. I always do this on my bike after I ride and I check my rear drive shaft. And the reason why is for this reason right here. Watch that sucker. You hear it? You see it? It's moving in and out. If I can get right on that bolt. Yep. She's moving. So this, there, look by the case of the transmission. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. See that movement? And if you look at the bolt, it's not moving. But, yep, gonna have to get in there with a uh, ratchet or a socket, I mean, open in, closed in wrench and get that sucker tightened back up because uh, that's gonna ruin that, that U-joint. So we gotta fix that too. So. Anyway, I've been finding some things here and there, so I'm going to address all the little issues that I find and get them all fixed up. And then I'm going to move on to the clutch. All right, guys, so I went ahead and used this 13 mil Craftsman wrench here and tightened up that there bolt for the transmission drive shaft. And so it's good now. I went ahead and got the electrical connectors up there all fixed up and reconnected with new connectors. Changed these out as well, taped them up, so that should be good. I looked at that boot over here and adjusted it as good as I could, but it just seems like that's just how it is, so that's how that's going to be. So now I'm working on getting the uh, clutches out. I got the belt off. This is my little tool. I think I don't know what kind of tool y'all use, but that's what I use right there. And then I'm about to pull that off with my trusty, dusty puller over there and we'll see what they look like when i take them off all right so got the clutches out pretty simple easy got my good puller good puller is a good thing to have here's the primary apparently they come with a black with a green stripe spring in it so that's not going back on the unit here's the secondary uh looks pretty good we're gonna like i said clean all the new stuff up and get it prepped and ready for the new belt so I'll cross hatch the sheaves on the new primary and clean up this secondary, cross hatch the sheaves there. And then I'm gonna install this white spring that goes with the kit whenever we go back together. So I'm gonna clean those up real quick and then we'll go ahead and throw them on the unit. All right, just finished cleaning up the clutch housing and uh, getting the clutches cross hatched ready for the new belt and the new spring. So this is the secondary all pulled apart, uh, cross-hatched up, ready to rock. CV Tech primary is cross-hatched, ready to go. All cleaned up. So I'm about to throw the clutches on, get that new belt installed, and I'll come back whenever it's in. Primary installed and torqued to 80 foot-pounds. All right, guys, secondary's in. Got it torqued down. Uh, some people say 44. Some people say 50 to 55. Uh, some, and then some people say 15 foot pounds, then 180 degrees, uh, wherever that ends up. 
So I went about 55 foot pounds on it. It's not going anywhere. And everything's good. Cleaned the belt up. Got all the uh, coating off from it being made with a solvent and uh, on a rag. And now everything's good to go. installed now after we throw everything back together because it's still torn way apart and after i paint that we're gonna have to go test it out and break the belt in before we can run it full out so we'll go pull it off do all that whenever it's time getting closer all right so got the clutch cover put back on i use grease on all the bolts and i put them in by hand to make sure you don't cross thread those because it would be a bad day uh got all the plastics thrown on dashes back together dielectric greased all the relays uh fuses any connections i could get to i went ahead and dielectric greased them we got the front bars painted up those are good to go they're drying up and we're going to move on to the foot wells after I clean those up. Well, the foot wells are still sitting over here because I couldn't help myself. And I went ahead and threw the bumpers on that were dried up. Let me know in the comments what you think of those. Got the front mounted up, tightened up. The roll bar here against the radiators all painted up. Rhino line out of a can. Best thing ever for racks. The headlights were missing. He did a wheelie, I think, and knocked him out. I'm sure he'll take care of that down the road. But yeah, guys, moving along. Now it's time for the foot wells. And then I'll be able to break the belt in. And then after the breakage in of the belt, we will go and test out this new clutch setup he's got. So I'll come back when I got the foot wells on. Foot wells in, guys. Check them out. Got them all tightened up. Good to go. Uh, this side went okay. Everything's where it should be. He is missing these plates. I think he threw them away when he installed the uh, foot wells originally. Um, so I didn't have anything laying around in the shop that I was able to use to be able to take the place of that. So we'll have to get some if he wants to run those. The bolts. He had them going the other way. These are the OEM bolts. And he had them going with this side from the top. And, you know, the nut was down here. And then by doing that, it the top part had nothing to, like, grab that square puck part on that, that bolt. So they I had to use pliers to hold it to even get it off. So I put them up this way so it captures it. And then after... I will take a grinder or a cutting wheel or something, uh, cut that off, the excess, and he'll just have the nuts right here. The back went good. If I had that L bracket, I could attach it here. The other side, on the other hand, did not come out as good. And that is either due to the front bar that holds the footwell being bent down in the front or just the footwells themselves, which I've had the, I have these same footwells and I had issues with my other side. I couldn't adjust it enough to get it to fit perfectly. Uh, these elongated holes where these studs come through, those need to be longer this way to where I can push the, the whole front of this into the bike more to get it to fit right here better. Because as you can see, it's a little bit off, like a half inch off or so. Come, so even if I had an L bracket for the front of this, it wouldn't work because it's so far away. The back went okay, so that's good. No L bracket here. Oh, well. I'm going to cut these off. That'll be that for the foot wells for now. Ran into another little thing I found. I opened the gas cap, and somebody tightened it down way too tight, and this is what happened. Yep. So, FT, bro. You, you tighten in your gas cap a little tight, bro. Water wasn't going to get in there, I promise. Uh, so now that's out of there because that will make it leak. And I may end up just using one of mine for the time being so he can go on this ride he's going on. But anyway, footwell's done. Everything is getting buttoned up. Still got to change the diff fluids. Still got to break in the belt. 
and then still got to ride it to know what that CV Tech clutch and the new secondary spring is going to be like and compare it to the original setup. So I'll come back whenever I am breaking the belt in and getting that all done. There is a proper procedure for that. Look it up. You heat cycle it twice. Don't go over three quarter throttle and be at lower speeds. Vary your speed up and down the whole 15, 20 minutes you're riding for each heat cycle. Let it cool all the way down, then do it again. So you do it twice. And then after it cools down a second time, you can take it for a rip. We'll be back when we're going for ours. Check out that yummy rear diff fluid, guys. I think this is the first time it's ever been changed since it was new. See all that material in there? Good thing we changing that stuff. We'll let that drain. And we'll go ahead and drain the front. And then I'll top it off. The rear takes 75, 140 weight. And the front takes the 7590 full synthetic. I use the Valvoline. So we got new diff fluid sitting here ready to go. So I'm going to do them diffs real quick. And then we're going to go break the belt in. All right, guys. FT's on the way. So we got to hurry up and do this last test with the CV Tech primary and the new secondary spring. I've already ran the bike twice, heating it up and done the clutch or belt break in. So here we go. We're going to run it down the road, let it warm up a little bit, and then we'll stop, hit it in high, and then we'll hit it in low like we did with the stock clutch. Yeah, it's a little cool right now at 118. I'll let it cool down.
monster guys I will say it's a nice smooth bike back in just a minute and I'll get his reaction. <laughs> Hell yeah. It definitely picks the wheels up. I'm sure it did that before, but it grabs. You saw the different RPM. Yeah. <laughs> guys ft just loaded up and he's rolling out taking his bike with him so he's ready for the next ride so moving on to the next one guys if y'all would please hit that like and subscribe hit that bell for notifications i will see y'all in the next video